Hey guys, it's Charles Jaeger with Premium B. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how we can make still images look more dynamic. And we're gonna be doing this in After Effects. I'll show you guys a few different ways we can do this. When you're editing a video, sometimes you may need to show a still image on screen. And these are essentially gonna be methods to give us more production value whenever you have to show a still image in your video. We're gonna look at four different ways we can do this. So let's go ahead and jump into After Effects. So the first one we're gonna look at here is gonna be using textures kind of overlaid over the image. So you can see I've got an image here, if I hit S, I'm gonna scale this up a little bit. And instead of just doing a, basically a scale up where I would like keyframe the scale and have the image kind of scale up like this, you know, that gives us a little bit of movement. We can do this in a little bit more of a creative way to give this some parallax. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna make this image 3D. So now we can see it's 3D. And I've got this glass texture, I'm gonna drag and drop this into my composition. And I'm going to scale this down. And you can see it just got some glass and we have little like dust specks and smudges on this glass. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that 3D as well. And let's go ahead on the mode here, let's go ahead and set this to be a screen blending mode. Depending on what your image looks like and the colors and everything, you may wanna set it to add, but I'm just gonna do screen in this situation. And let's go ahead and let's right click over here and let's do a new camera. And I wanna have this be a two node camera, 50 millimeters fine for now, go ahead and click okay. And let's come over here and let's go to the custom camera view. And now we can kind of see this from the side and I can kind of navigate and move around here. So what I actually want to do is I want to move that texture forward a lot closer to the camera. And then we're going to do a little camera move, simple move, and it's going to give us some nice parallax and make the image a little bit more interesting. So let's go ahead and select our glass texture. And I'm just going to come over here and let's go ahead and move it forward in Z space. You can see we have that texture there. And I'm going to move it pretty close to the camera. So almost like you know, three fourths of the way there. The closer you move to the camera, that parallax is gonna be more noticeable. And we'll take a look at that. Let's go back to our active camera view. And right now the texture, you can see we can barely see it. It's a little too scaled up. So I'm gonna just go ahead and select that whole shift. I'm gonna scale it down. So we're not changing the position of it, we're just changing the scale of it. I'll scale it down to something like this. And I may even move it a little bit so we can see some of that other texture there. See some of these spots around here. And now if I select the camera, we can do this with the camera tool. We have a pan tool here. We can move forward and backwards, but I'm actually just gonna do it with the position. So I'm just gonna hit P on that for position. And this very last value here is gonna be the Z space position. So now if I go ahead and move this, you can see how this looks on screen. We're scaling up the image, but that texture is scaling up at a faster rate. So it's kind of giving us some nice parallax. And it's a nice little accent you can do on the image. So if you're just gonna scale up a still image, this would give you a little bit more production value just making it a little bit more visually interesting, giving it more depth. And if you wanted to, you could come in here and we could change this to maybe add on that texture. And it brightens up that areas up there in the sky so you can see those. And if it's a little too much, you could just come over here to the opacity, just hit T on the keyboard for that and lower the opacity of this. So again, you can make it pretty subtle, but uh, you know, whatever works for you, depending on the shots you're working with, this is a nice way you can make a still image look more dynamic than just doing the typical kind of scale up move. Now, if you guys wanna know more about animating glass textures like this over your images or footage, we actually have a full tutorial on that, which covers some nice kind of documentary style techniques. And if you're interested in the glass textures that I use, we have a freebie pack that has 25 free glass textures, and that was one of them. And I'll have links to both of these on the blog post, so definitely check that out. Now, the next method I wanna show you guys works really well with things like websites or computer screens that you need to show on screen, almost emulating kind of like a computer screen animation. But you can also do this with any other image as well. So you can see I've got a screenshot here of the Premium Beat website with the free video assets, and I've got it down here. What I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna make it 3D as well. Let's go ahead and create a new camera. And in this case, again, I want this to be a two node camera, and that's pretty important for this particular case. And in this one, I'm actually gonna make it a little bit more of a wider lens. So let's go with the 35 millimeter and go ahead and click OK. So I'm just gonna hit C here to navigate the camera tool. And we're gonna kind of orbit around our image on screen of the website. And I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit and just kind of get this at an angle, kind of like we're looking at a screen off to the side. Something kind of like this looks pretty good. Now, ideally what we wanna have here is kind of an animated movement. And we're gonna do a few other things with this, kind of give us some shallow depth of field to make this, again, look more interesting, more like an actual computer screen. Now, instead of us keyframing the camera, kind of navigating it like this, I found that a lot of times that can look a little bit janky. 
because it will kind of, the movement of the camera in After Effects isn't exactly perfect. So a method we can use that makes this a lot easier is to actually create a no object and use that as kind of our operator for the camera. So let's go ahead and let's right click over here and let's do a new no object. And you can see I've got the camera kind of in the position I want it to be in. And that's when you want to start this process. So I kind of want it to end probably right here at this angle. And on that no object, I'm just gonna go ahead and make that 3D. And what I want to do here is I want to select my camera and I want to parent it to that no object. And when we do that, now this is going to kind of essentially act as our camera controller. So I can hit R for rotation and on this Y rotation, you can see I can actually pivot the camera around now, just like this. And what's cool is that I can actually move the camera. So actually when I rotate over here, I can see we're kind of getting a little too far off to the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera. And this is nice because it's kind of independent of that null object and we're not really gonna mess up our movement here too much. So we can still kind of rotate this. It still kind of gives us a similar movement. So when we keyframe this, we can still move our camera around. It's not gonna affect our null object from animating the entire camera. So it's kind of nice. It gives us a few other ways that we can tweak things without messing up the entire, basically, keyframe sequence. So I'm gonna move the camera up just a little bit more. Again, I kind of want it to show this uh, free video assets area here. And so this is kind of where I want it to end on. So let me come down here. Let's go ahead and rotate our null object. Something like this. Let's go ahead and keyframe the Y rotation. Let's move down a few seconds here, maybe five seconds, and rotate this back over like this. And what I want to do now is I want to actually turn on shallow depth of field for the camera. So I'm going to select the camera. Let's toggle this down under camera options. And we have depth of field. Go ahead and check that on. And if we go ahead and in increase the aperture or the blur level, I'm gonna increase the blur level in this case. So now we can kind of see what that looks like. And now let's go ahead and adjust the focus distance. If you hold shift when you pull on this, it'll move it a lot faster. So you can see it went a little too much there. So let me come back over this way. I'm gonna adjust that blur level back down. Maybe it's a little too high there and increase the aperture a little bit. I'm just gonna adjust the focal distance again. Here we go. Now we can see that right there. So we have the blur level cranked up a little too high. So let's go ahead and bring that back down to a more natural looking level. So something like this looks pretty good. So we're kind of getting that background falling off back there. And you can see this black area here. It's kind of outside of the image. What we can do to fix that really easily is I'm just going to right click. Let's do a new solid. And let's go ahead and make that solid be the same color as the website here. Go ahead and click OK. And I'm just going to put this below everything in the comp. So it's kind of in the background there. So that just kind of eliminates that if that's distracting you. If you want it to be black like that, you can just leave that off. But I'm gonna set that there just so it isn't as distracting when we see the side of the website like that. So you can see how this moves over. And now this kind of moves into focus because we're kind of ending where we set up our focus distance. And again, you can adjust the blur levels even more. And really subtle can work really nice with something like this, especially when you blow this up to full screen, you can see how that kind of rolls out of focus there. So I'm just gonna tweak that a little bit more. And I like where that ends, but again, if we leave that there, it's gonna basically be out of focus and then come into focus there like that. And again, like I said, if we need to adjust the camera, I'm just gonna move this just so you guys can see this, but if I need to move the camera, I can move it. Maybe move it up and over a little bit here. And it's still gonna be linked to that null object, so we're not really messing up our entire animation when we do that. That's why I like doing this method like this. And just to smooth things over on the keyframes here, I'm gonna select that last keyframe on our null object animation. I'm gonna hit F9 to make it easy ease. Let's jump over into the graph editor. I'm just gonna pull this handle all the way over and it'll kind of give us a nice kind of quick, smooth animation there on that. So we can go ahead and RAM preview this. Take a look and see what this looks like. And again, this works really well for websites or any other screens you need to be showing on screen. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is we have a freebie over on our free downloads on Premium Beat and it's for a computer screen template for Premiere Pro. It's essentially a Mogurt file and it does some really cool screen animations, very similar to this one and they're very easy to set up. We have a full tutorial on that as well. So I will link that on the blog post also. So make sure you guys check that out if you're doing a lot of screen style animations like this one. Now, another way you guys can make your images more dynamic is by masking out different objects in your images. So you can see here, I've got this image of a runner. If I select it, you can actually see I went through and manually masked out everything around this runner. And what that's gonna do is now I have an independent layer that I can now kind of keyframe this from everything else on the image. So we can do different movements with this. So in this case, what I might do is kind of a punch in where I'm kind of subtly scaling in on this image or I might wanna keyframe the runner kind of moving in slow motion like that. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hit S for scale. And let's go ahead and just scale this up over time a little bit here. Zoom back out on the timeline. 
And we'll just scale this up a little bit. And if we come back over here, we'll do the same thing on the background. We want to do it a, a little bit slower rate because it's kind of going to be like the background's further in the distance. And now we can kind of see what this looks like if we RAM preview this. As you can see, so it's just kind of focusing in more on the runner. We're getting a little bit of movement with the background. I want to punch that up a little bit more. But you can kind of see how that works. And that's a nice way you can make images more dynamic as well, doing something like this. I didn't want to show you guys the entire mask out process. Obviously, it's a lengthy and tedious thing to do, depending on what you're working with. But another thing I could do here is with the position, we'll go ahead and select that. And I could keyframe that as well, just a little bit. As you can see there. And another popular thing that you will see a lot of times with stuff like this is they will make the background like black and white and kind of allowing you to focus more in on the subject. So I can just select the background comp there, go over to effect. Now let's come down to color correction and a quick way to make something black and white is just using the tint effect. And I can see how we've done that here. And so that's another way you can kind of make things stand out just by masking them out, doing different effects like that, scaling effects. Again, the idea here is just to make your image more dynamic so you're not just showing a flat still image on screen all the time. Now, if you guys want more tips on animating a 2D photograph like this one, especially with mask and using the puppet tool, we have a full tutorial on that as well. And I go really in depth on different things there for how to animate and mask out objects. I will link to that one on the blog post as well. Finally, guys, the last way I wanna show you to make images more dynamic is super easy, and that's gonna be using overlays over images. I do this all the time, it's very popular. Definitely can make a still image look more dynamic and actually can almost make it look more like a video clip. So I've got a shot here of this snowy town, and I've just got it scaling up just a little bit here, kind of your typical punch in move. And what I'm gonna do is I've got some snow overlay. I'm just gonna drop this over. This is a freebie from Premium Beat. I'm gonna scale this down a little bit. And so we can kind of see this snow drift here is from one of the snow freebie packs we've got. And I will scale that up just a touch. Now let's go ahead and set this to be a screen blending mode since it's over a black background. It may be a little difficult to see because of the snow with the compression of the tutorial, but you can see if I zoom in here, we can see some of that snow drifting around. And obviously with a snowy shot like this, that's gonna give us some movement. And now we can see the RAM preview. So we're getting some snowfall there as we punch in very subtly. So stuff like this can go a long way in making your images look more dynamic. Another thing I've got here is a bokeh. So it's just kind of a, basically a light flare off to the side. You can kind of see what this is gonna look like. And these can accent really nicely over images as well, especially depending on like if it's an event or a wedding type video, anything like that. So I'll set this to be a screen blending mode as well. You can also try add and lower the opacity. Sometimes it might be a little too harsh, but you can kind of see it's almost like we're getting a little sun flare there over this. Anything to just add a little bit more movement to the image in a natural way. So let's go ahead and do a RAM preview of this. Let's take a look at what this looks like. So you can see that works really well. And again, this is a very easy thing to do. We're just using these overlay assets and dropping them over our images. And if you guys are wanting some free overlays, we have a ton of these in the free download section of Premium Beat. We have God Rays, the Ice and Snow, Bokeh, and all types of other kind of like fog and overlay assets you guys definitely can use for things like this. So be sure to check that out. And I'll link to several of those again on the blog post. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial at looking at four different ways you can make your still images look more dynamic. Hopefully this gave you guys a few ideas. Be sure and check out the other videos and tutorials we have over on the Premium Beat channel. And I will catch you guys on the next one.